So, I mean, this really leads very nicely on to uh, some things which are changing in our field with regards to stents. And um, we've seen, of course, go from bare metal to different variations of the drug looting stent. And now there are various offerings of the BVS scaffold. Yeah. BVS, uh, I have a particularly huge experience with BVS. I've implanted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And, uh, and I started since, since the beginning doing IVUS and O. Oh, or OCT sure. as well in uh, those patients. I think that with the scaffold we have to pay a lot of attention, a lot of care in uh, assessing exactly the anatomy of uh, the artery we're going to implant a uh, scaffold because uh, we know that we have a limit of expansion of the scaffolds as well as we have uh, uh, we don't see the scaffold so we don't have uh, in yeah. visual information. And so uh, we understood that, uh, uh, and also the type of lesion, we have to prepare the lesion. So prepare, assessing the lesion, preparing the lesion, implanting, post-dilating, and assessing the final result are steps that require in m different moments the use of intravascular. So can you just walk us through, the patient comes in, you turn an angiogram, you think they're a suitable candidate for a BVS stent. How would you go about it? implanting that? What steps would you take? Uh, the step do I do is uh, first is the assessment of the caliber of the yeah. artery and I do the predilatation with yeah. a balloon that I think is the same of the artery. The ratio is one to one to one uh, so I stretch a little bit the artery in order to see if there is any waste uh, on the balloon. If there is no waste in two orthogonal views I go for the uh, for the scaffold implantation. This happens in uh, the majority of cases, I would say 70% of cases. In uh, other cases, we have a uh, recoil, resistance, we have a uh, um, long lesion, we don't know if there is a lot of calcium inside that we don't see by angiography. Uh, we need to uh, use cutting balloon or scoring balloon or rotablator. In those cases, always I use the IVUS or the OCT because I want to assess the uh, exactly the um, the dimension of the artery, the, the, the structure of the artery, and in this uh, IVUS is better than OCT because it gives you a comprehensive analysis of the anatomy and the media to media uh, distance, which is very important, is well, well detected, especially in large vessels, I mean 3.5, 4, yeah. where the uh, scaffold is uh, mostly. Uh, apply it and that's, use that's true. I mean, I certainly struggle, I think, using IVUS in as uh, uh, OCT, sorry, as the vessel starts to get very big, you the application is not, is you not so see. good. Yeah. Yes, the OCT is useful for endothelialization. Yeah. And also because you see very well the struts and, uh, of, the, of the scaffold, uh, better than with the IVUS. But you don't need to see the struts. You need to assess uh, the anatomy of the artery, the composition of the wall, and also, uh, uh, once uh, you know the artery, you, uh, you implant the proper size uh, scaffold. So if I'm at a centre which is just starting to put BVS in and I have a choice between OCT and IVUS, IVUS is the... Is uh, the you should use both. You should I use would both. say both. I yeah. would say both. So when you use a, a BVS, you have, it's a mission. Yeah. It's a mission. You get good results. My experience, we are published with uh, my co-workers, uh, the one-year ghost results in my center with 98% of follow-up in true real-world lesions, so very complex lesions, CTOs, bifurcations, yeah. long lesions, and we achieved excellent results with below 10% of uh, a, a maze at one year in very complex lesions, and uh, we did a lot of intravascular imaging for uh, achieving these results. So if you want to achieve a good result, you have to spend more at the beginning, especially with the BBS. So it's all about uh, how you make your assessment, how you plan, how you predilate to make sure that you have a good result long term. Yeah, I predilate with non-compliant balloon if possible, especially in resistant lesions. I oversize the balloon as regarding the, uh, as compared with the arterial caliber. Then, uh, at this point I implant and I overstretch the scaffold very gently but I go up with the delivery balloon to 20, even 20 atmospheres, the average is 16 and then I post dilate in case of need with a non-compliant balloon. So I spend much more time and much more devices and I use uh, in 30% of cases intravascular imaging. 
So your time is an investment for the patient's future, really? Yes, it's an investment because, uh, I mean, it's a paradigm shift. You have to change your mind. You want to treat in a more physiological way mm. the patient. So not leaving anything after three years, you have to spend much more time, more time at the beginning yeah. and more devices. So in my opinion, slightly worryingly, you see occasionally some people implanting BVS stents without using any imaging modality. This is a, this is not, is a mistake, because at least at the beginning, you have to understand how this technology, novel technology, behaves. Because it's different from yeah. that extent. It's a thicker the, the current generation, so it's more prone to scaffold thrombosis. So you have to know how the scaffold behaves, and to know how scaffold behaves, you have to use the intravascular imaging. Yeah.